Greetings to you from St. Benjamin's Lutheran Church in the village of Meadow Creek in Westminster, Maryland. This is Pastor David Schaefer, and I'm glad to be with you on this Reformation Sunday weekend as we celebrate our Lutheran heritage and our Lutheran tradition. I'd like to share with you the theme statement for this weekend, the Holy Scripture for this time, a little bit about the Luther Rose, some prayers, and some announcements. Reformation Sunday, rooted in the past and growing into the future, the church must always be reformed in order to live out the love of Christ in an ever-changing world. We celebrate the good news of God's grace, that Jesus Christ sets us free every day to do this life-transforming work. Trusting in the freedom given to us in baptism, we pray for the church that Christians will unite more fully in worship and in mission. Holy Scripture for this day include Jeremiah 31. Here the renewed covenant will not be breakable, but like the old covenant, it will expect the people to live upright lives. To know the Lord means that one will defend the cause of the poor and the needy. The renewed covenant is possible only because the Lord will give iniquity and remember sin. Our hope lies in a God who forgets. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Psalm 46 God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of our God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. It shall not be moved. God will keep it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar. The kingdoms totter. He utters his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. For I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. And then Romans chapter 3. Paul's words stand at the heart of Martin Luther's preaching. No human beings make themselves right with God through works of the law. We are brought into a right relationship with God through the divine activity centered in Christ's death. This act is a gift of grace that liberates us from sin and empowers our faith in Jesus the Christ. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by the law, for through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he has passed over the sins previously committed, 
It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. And then the gospel reading for this Reformation Sunday. Jesus speaks of truth and freedom as spiritual realities known through his word. He reveals the truth that sets people free from sin. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? And Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits a sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. These are our Holy Scripture for this Reformation Sunday. I don't know if you're familiar with the Luther Rose. There's a picture of it right here. The significance of the rose. I'd like to read a little bit about that. The black of the cross in the middle of the Luther Rose reminds us we are saved from sin because Jesus died on the cross. The red heart that is around that black cross, reminds us we live because Jesus shed his blood for us. Our faith in him has saved us. I'm going to show you that again so you can see a little bit more. And then the white, the white rose, reminds us that our faith gives us joy, comfort, and peace. White is to remind us that this peace is like the angels in joy. The blue of the background reminds us of the sky and the hope that we have will one day meet Jesus in heaven. And then the gold circle around the outside shows us the preciousness of God's love, the endless joy in heaven, and it's a circle, it's an endless shape. And so we have this wonderful Luther rose that's used in all kinds of art and printed material uh, helping us to think a little bit more about the significance of Jesus being at the heart of our faith and his grace and his love for all. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Renew and inspire the church in freedom of the gospel, O God. Where the church is in error, reform it. Where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it. Where the church is divided, bring unity to it. Ignite in us the working of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the earth changes, as the mountains shake and the waters roar, May we care for this planet as a holy habitation of all living things. Sustain all peoples and lands recovering from natural disasters of any kind. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide areas of the world divided or traumatized by conflict, especially in our own land. Free all from slavery and human trafficking and protect all that stand in harm's way. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Release those who are in bondage to debt, chronic pain, or addiction. Grant healing touch to all those who are ill, especially our friend Mel Pittenger. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In this family of faith, we give you thanks for courageous voices that have remained firm in their commitment to the one who frees us from sin and death. Centered in your grace, unify us in the hope of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Even in death, you free us and give us a place in your house. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us truth and freedom, especially Martin Luther and those who work for the renewal of the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A couple of announcements at this time. We continue to bring to you a live stream of our worship service on Sundays at 915 we're using the Facebook Live platform to do this, and it will be posted to our YouTube page later that morning or early afternoon. Just a reminder that we do have a blood drive this coming Saturday, October 31st from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. We hope that you go to the Red Cross blood donation site and log in there and give um, the folks there your information and set up an appointment. We're glad to have this opportunity to give back to our community in this way. Sunday, November 1st, having had a time change overnight going from daylight savings time to regular Eastern Standard Time, we fall back. We have our 915 service on All Saints Sunday. Carnation and Candle Remembrances are due this Sunday, October the 25th, so that we can have adequate preparations made for the November 1st All Saints. Coming up then that week, we have our election um, for local and state and national offices. God's mercy and God's care over all of that. Then on Sunday, November 15th, our women host their annual thank offering service, and we will have a special guest preacher that day, Pastor Stacy Brady, who is the Director of Church Relations for Lutheran Social Ministries of Maryland, and she's also the chaplain at the village um, of Miller's Grant in Ellicott City. Reminding you too, as we approach Thanksgiving, that we will have a um, community-wide um, video prepared of a Thanksgiving service by local uh, churches. Um, I will be part of that, and you'll be able to watch that beginning on the Sunday prior to Thanksgiving. This will be in lieu of having our in-person Thanksgiving Eve service. And then already that weekend after Thanksgiving, we begin the holy season of Advent, and we think about the ho holidays and Christmas that are ahead of us. Please, please stay tuned to um, what we will be doing in terms of celebration of Christ's nativity. We hope to be offering more services and having, of course, reservations made for all those services. You will have to have a reservation made um, for those but we will keep you apprised of those. And I um, want to remind you that each Sunday you come to church, we are always welcoming you, but we would like you to prepare ahead of time by giving us um, a heads up that you will be coming so we can make adequate preparations with our worship packets um, on Saturday at 12 noon. So please get those our SVPs, those reservations in by noon on Saturday for that Sunday that's following. We do hope you're doing quite well in these days and that you're finding a lot of um, good days. Uh, it's just been an interesting time as we've had um, a taste of cooler weather and now we're back to just what I would call almost an Indian summer. Um, sure has been a glorious week in terms of our warm weather. Uh, we will be getting colder weather soon, I'm sure. Again, we hope all is well with you and yours. We're doing a number of Christmas gift programs, and those are detailed in our newsletter and in our Sunday bulletin. We uh, continue to pray for our friend Mel Pittenger, who's been diagnosed with stage four cancers pretty much throughout his body. Um, 
Please keep Mel in your thoughts and prayers. He's decided not to have treatment of any kind, but would um, would uh, welcome your prayers for his his comfort and his peace. May your week ahead after this coming weekend be blessed in so many ways, and may you be a blessing to others. Go in peace and serve him. Thanks be to God.